So I'm a moody kind of guy. Here's some of the things that I do to help maintain a positive attitude. <laughs> Good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. I'm just a dude on a bicycle. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Again, I'm a dude on a bicycle. I'm just trying to evolve as a filmmaker, as a writer, poet, and as a human being. Thank you so much for letting me ride along with you this morning. There are a ton of people out this morning, and I feel so self-conscious about talking to myself loudly while I'm riding a bicycle on a trail. So forgive me my distraction, but I'm not giving you the full attention that you deserve. It is another absolutely gorgeous morning though. If you didn't know, I've been trying to add a video component to the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. I've been putting that out on YouTube. I just mount a GoPro to my handlebars and let that run while we have our conversation here in the mornings on Mondays and Thursdays. And then I post the videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. Now, I do not like the quality of video that I'm getting. And I think I figured it out. It's the vibration of the bike because while these trails are maintained very nicely and very nice smooth pavement, there's still quite a bit of vibration. So I got to figure out a different kind of mount. I think we're probably going to end up going to that chest mount kind of thing because that seems to produce really nice bicycling videos. But I digress. Another project that I work on is called These Things. Kind of a blog post and I send it around via email too every other Thursday so a couple times a month hey good morning coming around your left here uh oh we got some traffic here hey on your left here good morning whoa but as you know I can be quite a moody kind of guy. A lot of that has to do with I'm trying some new things in terms of, oh, we were talking about these things. Anyway, when I get prepped for these things, finding content, it's basically like kind of five to seven things that have inspired me recently. So I get out. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Coming around your left here. So it's like five to seven things that I found that inspired me or that I find particularly useful pragmatically for life or bicycle commuting or something about filmmaking maybe. So today in these, the edition of these things, I've uh, been kind of doing these meditations on uh, this quote by uh, Paracelsus, or this idea of the old Greek philosopher Paracelsus, and his idea was that there is essentially no such thing as poison, but that there is only too much of a certain thing that becomes poisonous. So a little bit of cyanide won't kill you, but a certain amount will. Whew. In other words, it's an accumulation toward a tipping point, right? When you get to uh, too much, and then you, uh, and that's maybe when the, when you become poisoned, and when something becomes poisonous. So it's more quantity of equality over time kind of equation, from what I understand. Now, I don't know much about philosophy. <laughs> or biology or religion. Thank you, Edie Brickell. You remember that tune? What is it? Religion is a smile on a dog. I love the image. I don't know that I agree, but I love the image. Oh, I love this image too. Oh. I'm 
figuring it out. My friend here in town that work at the uh, university with mentioned a thing, oh, it's been months ago, about mountain biking and how you take a berm. And I've been applying that to the wall ride, especially with the uh, Hukui commuter. It makes a lot of difference. That is, you want to keep at, a, at an angle so that your bike is kind of at an angle toward like level. So if you're on a wall, like, like the wall right over there, it's not a big wall, it's maybe what, 30 to 40 degrees. But you don't wanna keep your bike straight up and down as you're riding on the wall, cause that puts you on the side of your tires. And you wanna keep the center bead of your tires on the flattest part of the pavement. So the idea is that you lean. Now that feels weird because you're leaning your bike downhill <laughs> Like you're, like if you're going around a left corner or a left left wall, if you're cruising left on a wall, that means your left handlebar is going to be pointed down at an exaggerated angle, <laughs> and it feels weird. But I'm finding the line more consistently when I do that. Now I think part of the reasons that the little red bastard finds the lines so easily is that the wheels and the tires that are on that bike have a lot more surface area or a different kind of surface area than the uh, on the Hukui commuter. But that's not what we're here for. We're not talking about lines, are we? Bicycling. Hey, good morning. Coming around your left. What we're talking about isn't why this monkey on a bike is a moody guy, because we don't know that. <laughs> I mean, it's all emotional, of course. But here are some things that I learned when I was putting together these things, which is the point of what I've been trying to say when I got distracted by the wall, which if you don't get distracted by, distracted by wall rides, you're not riding the wall right. I know, that's very dogmatic, isn't it? I just don't want you to fall. You gotta pay attention, full attention, when you're riding a wall, that's all. So John Green, some of you may know, young adult author, he just put out a video on YouTube. You know, he and his brother Hank do the Vlog Brothers on YouTube. They've been doing that for about 10 years. Anyway, every once in a while, they're really gems, like of just practical, useful information. And uh, a recent one that he put out are like things I learned from my wife. Like life skills? What was it he said? Oh, I don't remember the title, which is of course not helping you a bit. But I'm gonna give you a couple. You just look up John Green on YouTube. Come on, it's that easy. It's that easy, you can do it. I'll put it in the description, how about that? Okay, better idea, thank you, great idea. So I love this collaboration. So it's basically seven tips for living a happier life from his wife. And so I thought I would share a couple of them because I don't wanna just steal his content outright. Those puddles are why fenders would be really nice. The first is to wash your sheets at least once a week. It is psychologically, scientifically proven that sleeping in clean sheets helps you sleep better. And don't you love the feeling of getting in a bed with clean sheets? So there you go. Thank you, John, and you're welcome anyone who doesn't do that. If you try it, I guarantee you will sleep better and that means that you're going to feel a lot better about your life. Speaking of, last night I had so many nightmares. All night. It was like I was on acid. It was really wild. I'm not going to get into that though. Another thing that he talks about, and actually a lot of people have written on this idea and it's really fascinating. It's about there's an article I read in the New York Times, the New Yorker. It must have been the New York Times because of the style of writing. Hey, good morning. And it was like, it's called something like the White Walls of America or something like this. And it talks about how many, many people these days live in 
spaces, like in an apartment or a house. And they, hey, good morning. And they, uh, they don't put anything on their walls. And how it, it really degrades someone psychologically. Again, it's not about the psychology of happiness and how we manifest this in our physical lives. But John was reiterating this idea about how if you put things up on the wall, it personalizes your place. It gives you a feeling of uh, not ownership, but hey, good morning, on your left here. Hey, good morning. But just the creative act itself of making a space yours, making it not white or beige. A lot of times they're beige walls also. But just the simple act of it is a creative act because you're making decisions about how to put something up in a space. And if you live in a place that they don't want you to put thumbtacks, you can use uh, painter's tape. It comes in green and blue. Hey, good morning. <laughs> that dude blissed out over there on that in the sun. I don't know if you saw him, but so cool to see that. Laying on a bench, his bike next to him. So one of the other things that I've been reading recently that was in these things this week about uh, changing your mood, changing your perspective, is to get out and take some photos. You know, uh, Dorothea Lang has this great quote where she says, the camera is a tool that you use to see the world without the use of a camera. In other words, by using a camera, you begin to look at the world differently and therefore your perspective changes. I really dig this idea because I found it to be true. I, um, I was not a visual person at all before I started really practicing photography. And when I started practicing photography, I started looking at the world differently, like very differently. Um, light, I appreciate light in a way that I never have. Now, when we lived up in Alaska, it was easy to appreciate the light because it is emphatic. Everything up north becomes very emphatic. Everything about it, the air, the water, the light. It's an elemental kind of place. If you like being outside, I highly recommend it. Uh-oh, let's see how distracted we get this morning. How about that? But I don't know if uh, you know it, but the uh, camera on your mobile device, your smartphone, is a really good camera. If you start taking photos, all of a sudden you'll start seeing the world differently. It's one of the things I love about uh, being out on Instagram is I follow a bunch of professional photographers out there. And so I feel like I'm seeing great examples of what photography can be and what photography can do. I follow a lot of these folks on uh, YouTube and on Instagram, and they talk about their processes. And it's so helpful to me as someone who wants to, who I'm really enjoying photography. And uh, I think I've always kind of wanted to get into it. But you know, when I was young, it was all film-based. And uh, to do it in a personal, creative manner meant that you had to have a dark room and chemicals. And I just, uh, I didn't have the resources or imagination to think that I could do that. So nowadays it's a lot easier to uh, get into photography and to be a photographer because you've got a smartphone, you've got access to all kinds of photographic visual power that way. <laughs> so anyway, they said, that's another thing. Another thing is go on a walk. And when you're on your walk, look up. Look up at the trees. And again, I think this is a way to uh, focus your attention on light because when you look up at a tree, there's so many different colors, shades of green, I guess, hues, 
Yes, to be precise, you're right. Hues, not color, I understand. So those are some of the things that I try to practice. Also, I talk about this a lot, the gratefulness meditation in the evenings. That, that is the most helpful thing in my life toward uh, feeling better, just feeling good. Because it's like, hey, there's some great things going on in the world. And uh, so the gratefulness meditation focuses my attention on that right before bed. It does not prevent people from trying to drown me in my sleep, though, which is not cool, by the way. Hi, hey, good morning. Well, folks, that is it. Put something up on your white walls. Why don't you take a photo, print out the photo, and put that on your wall? Oh my gosh, do you see what's happening here? All of a sudden, your life is becoming yours. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a goofy idea. But I think it works, and I think it's a good thing to do. Um, also, man, washing your sheets. I'll be honest, I don't do that. Jennifer does it. I don't even really know when it happens. I think it happens on Sunday mornings. I know that when we get in the bed and the sheets are all washed, ooh, it feels so nice. Thank you, Jennifer. There are certain things that she does around the house because she does them excellently with great efficiency, which I do not. And there are things that I do with excellent, I was gonna say efficiency, but I'm not super efficient. Um, there are certain things that I'm efficient with. You got a bicycle problem? I'm pretty efficient with that these days, but otherwise not so much. Hey folks, that is it for me today. If you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Thank you so much for letting me ride with you, for letting me be part of your ride. I really appreciate it. Hey, um, get out on Twitter and Instagram. I've created new accounts specific to the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. And both of those accounts are at Pedal Podcast. I know, that's what was available. That's the way it is these days, you know. You gotta get creative. Um, we're working on building out a website specific to the podcast, so we'll be looking for that too. I'm pretty excited about that. Got some new things going on for Oliver Bicycle Works as well. So lots of great things happening this summer. And um, we're going to a rodeo this weekend. Yeah, how do you like that? Well, hey, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle and uh, whatever your bicycle it is, um, I hope that you have a chance to get out and be a part of your own ride this week, this weekend. And I look forward to riding with you on Monday. I appreciate you letting me be part of the ride. It's the only one we got. I'm grateful we get to do it together.